Hi everybody! It's Anya, the adult doll and toy collector. And today we're going to go into the toy realm. As you can see, I have a new background here in the small plastic world. This is wrapping paper that I got from where else? The good old Dollar Tree. And it's a space theme because today, as you guessed from the opening crawl, we are going to go back to a galaxy far, far away. And I wanna show off my collection of vintage Star Wars action figures. All of these figures are from my childhood. These were my figures that I played with as a kid who loved Star Wars and still does love Star Wars. The only thing I could think to keep this fair was to do them in the order in which they appear in the film. So that's how I'm going to do it. I saw Star Wars as a kid when it came out in 1977 and I never looked back. I thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. I absolutely wanted to collect all of the toys associated with it. I wanted to collect all of the trading cards associated with Star Wars, any books about Star Wars, any records about Star Wars, any anything Star Wars, I wanted it immediately. I've always been a collector and so this was just the perfect, I did not get all 12 of the original figures, but I do have eight of them. So in today's video, I'll show you four figures. And in the next video, I'll show you four more. I had to split it up because the video was getting a little too long. So first up, we've got R2-D2, everybody's favorite astromech droid. While most of the sort of humanoid or human sized action figures in this line are three and three quarters inch high or about nine centimeters high, R2 here is only about two and a half inches or about five centimeters high in keeping with his scale in the movie. The top of his head does look very good. It seems to look like the movie. He has shiny metal dome. I will say the front part of his face, I'm not sure how close it is to the movie. There's some detail that's a little lacking, but it's okay, it works. It's still the R2 we know and love. One neat thing about his head is this feature. the head clicks when you turn it around. He has a sticker that goes all around his body. This looks very movie accurate to me. It goes all the way around to the back. On the side, the legs are white plastic, and then they've got a little blue paint as a detail. Here's the other leg, and his legs move back and forth. This is what R2's body looks like from below. There is a screw inside that's holding the head and the body together. And the feet have holes in them and there is copyright info around the base. GMFGI, General Mills Fun Group Incorporated, 1977, made in Taiwan. I loved Star Wars so much that I actually kept the cards that the figures came on. So this is R2's card. It's got the photo from the movie. It's got the Star Wars logo. It's got Luke and Leia on the top right. It's got the price tag on the left, $2.19. I wish you could get figures for that nowadays. And of course, the Kenner logo down on the bottom. This is the back of the card. It has a list of the 12 available Star Wars figures, There's instructions for how to work the lightsaber mechanism, and of course it shows the vehicles you could get, the TIE Fighter, the X-Wing Fighter, and the Land Speeder. I did not have the vehicles. It also has the action collector stand down in the bottom where you, if you bought all of the 12 of the action figures and sent proof of purchase, you could get this neat stand. I actually did not have all 12 figures, so I did not have the opportunity to get the stand. Next, we have everyone's favorite protocol droid, C-3PO. He's made out of shiny metal. He has five basic points of articulation, which is the same as most of the humanoid type figures. You can move his head back and forth, his arms swing back and forth, and he bends at the hip so that he can sit and there are no other joints in his leg. Here is a close-up of his face. Got details on his front. The arms have this interesting detail here, as in the movie, where they're sort of held together by this wire. And his knee joints and feet have a lot of detail. It appears to match 
his appearance in the movie very well. He has copyright markings on his leg, copyright GMFGI Hong Kong. Here is C-3PO's card. I won't show you the back because it's the exactly the same as R2's card. Next up, Stormtrooper. This figure only has four points of articulation. Because of the mold, you, he cannot move his head, but he can move his arms back and forth, and he bends at the hip so he can sit. He came with an accessory. He's got his blaster. It's a teeny tiny replica of the blaster from the movie. This side is plainer than the other side. And his right hand is molded so that he can hold the blaster. So let's get a closer look. Here's the helmet. It's got a lot of good detail. It appears to be very faithful to the movie, and so does the body. The arms have good detail. Here he is from the back. The legs have this detail where the one leg has the sort of the knee shield. His copyright markings are GMFGI 1977 Hong Kong. Here is the Stormtrooper card back. Next, we've got my favorite Star Wars character of all time, Princess Leia. I absolutely love Princess Leia. When I saw the movie for the first time, I just thought she was the best. I wanted to be her. She is smart. She is brave. It's just everything that you could want to be when you grow up. So this figure technically has two accessories. She's got her Leia blaster and she's wearing a cape. We all know in the movie that Leia was wearing a white dress, but I imagine it was easier for Kenner to manufacture this figure wearing pants probably just so she could have some articulation at the hip and be able to sit down. She has the five basic points of articulation, movement at the head, her arms go back and forth, movement at the hip to sit. In this small of a figure, I mean, I think it's hard to do any kind of actual likeness to an actor, but it's an attractive little figure and the paint job is nice and the hairstyle is faithfully reproduced. This is what she looks like from the side from the back and the other side. Now from this angle you can see I this figure actually has a paint flaw. This was how she was straight out of the package so it's a little factory flaw. It's fine by me. I still love her. Kenner did a nice job on the sculpt of the outfit. The sleeves look nice and the bodice here looks nice and they did some nice you know details where it looks like fabric draping. The belt isn't particularly faithful to the movie, so I'm not sure, maybe they were working on like a prototype outfit or something. The bottom of Leia's feet have the holes for the stand. So this is the figure from the front side, back. The belt is painted in the back as well, and there's still some other draping details around the belt, which is nice. Side, Leia's markings, GMFGI 77, made in Taiwan. Her hands are painted and her right hand is molded so she can hold her blaster. To mimic the look of a dress, Kenner made this cape. It's a piece of vinyl and it's got the holes for the arms. And this is her blaster. And this is pretty faithful to the movie. And there is the other side. So needless to say, I think she's my favorite figure. Unfortunately, I don't still have her card. I know I saved it. Unfortunately, it didn't get preserved along with the other cards. I just love these Kenner figures. I just think they are so cool. I love that they're stylized and small and they're very, they're so simple, but they still have a lot of nice detail to them. Thank you for joining me today to take a look at four of my original vintage Star Wars figures from the 1970s. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already done so. Stay tuned for a part two, which is coming soon with the other four figures and may the force be with you. See you next time, bye.